the next point. We should ensure that whatever we see is clear. That means work is being done and we can see that it is in opposite direction. Hello students and uh, my viewers at home. Welcome to Ministry of Education e-learning, Kaduna State. My name is Obangozi Gloria. Welcome to another segment of Home Management class. And on today's topic, we have practical test. Practical test. And then our subtopic is on practical test interpretation. This is our practical question. Your school football team has just won the Governor's Cup competition. Your school football team has just won the Governor's Cup competition. A. Prepare a suitable dinner to celebrate their victory. Prepare a suitable dinner to celebrate their victory. B. Prepare two snacks for the pre-dinner. B. Prepare two snacks for the pre-dinner. C. Prepare a refreshing drink for them to cool down immediately after the game on the field and serve along with the snacks. I will take the C again. Prepare a refreshing drink for them to cool down immediately after the game on the field and serve along with the snacks. In a practical interpretation class, the practical te uh, test interpretation has three sections. We have section A, section B, and section C. Having known that we have section A, section B, section C, we have to understand the practical test before it is interpreted. If you don't understand the practical test, you might interpret wrongly. Now let's go back to the question again to see what we are asked to do. This involves youth or teenagers who are just won in a competition. So we have known who they are. One, they are teenagers, they are youth. And then what do these youth like to take or eat usually? That is another point. If I am interpreting for an elderly person or for a lactating mother, I know what he or she needs. Now, for this youth, I know what they like. So we are asked to prepare a suitable dinner to celebrate their victory. And then two snacks for the pre-dinner. And then a refreshing drink. So we are preparing one dinner, and I know what this youth or teenagers like or love most. And then, B, we are to prepare two snacks. And C, a refreshing drink. Now, having known what we are to prepare for them, we go into the interpretation properly. Usually, in any practical test interpretation, there is a rough space for you to do all your work before you transfer to section A. As I told us that, the practical test question paper has three sections. Now we are going to section A. This section A is equally divided into three sections. What are these three sections? Dishes choosing, one section, reasons for choice, two section, chief ingredients and their quantity. Can you see? The section A which has Three sections, dishes chosen, reasons for choice, and chief ingredients and quantity. Now, the first interpretation is this. Since I have learned that these are teenagers and they are youth and what they loved, I chose fried chicken with rice and coleslaw. Now you wonder why the first food item written was a protein dish. 
In food and nutrition and home management, if you are writing any menu or dish, the protein content must come first. I can't say chicken, I can't say rice and chicken. It has to be chicken and rice. The protein content first before the carbohydrate content. So for the first choice I made, fried chicken, fried chicken with rice and coleslaw. That is the first dish I chose. Number two, which is the second section, I have to give my reasons for making that choice. What are my reasons for choosing fried chicken with the coleslaw? This main dish is usually enjoyed by teenagers. They like rice, they like and they love eating rice. Teenagers, both boys and girls. So this main dish is usually enjoyed by teenagers. It is balanced and has varieties of vegetables for nourishment. They have exercised on the field, they have played, so they have now worn and torn tissue which needed to be what? Nourished. So for the first part, I have mentioned the dishes I chose. Number two, reasons for choice. And then, the chief ingredients and their quantity. What are these chief ingredients? I cannot be preparing chicken jollof rice, and then in the list of the ingredients, I don't have chicken, I don't have rice. Then what am I preparing? That is the chief ingredients. And if you are writing the ingredients, there must be quantity. Either in cups, either in grams, either in what? Kilograms. So we have seen the section A. Fried chicken with rice and coleslaw. And we have seen the reasons for choice. And we have the chief ingredients. And now what are the chief ingredients? We have chicken. This chicken is what? How many do we need? 12 wings of chicken. Number two, we have rice. And what is the quantity of the rice I need? I need eight cups of rice. Then I have my cabbage for the coleslaw, which is one ball. I have carrot, which is six. I have my tomatoes, which is 10 balls. I have granite oil, one bottle. Then we have seasoning cubes or bouillon cubes. We have six cubes. We have onions. We have two bulbs of onions. Then we have curry, two tablespoons. And then thyme, one tablespoon. Well, some of you will be wondering, no water, no pepper, I said, Chief ingredients and quantity. These are the most important. Every other ingredient could come in. But these ones, which are the chief ingredients, must be mentioned. So we have seen the first choice we've made and the reasons for our choice. And then the chief ingredients and quantity. Now we go to the next dish which we have chose. They said we should what? Make two snacks for their pre-dinner. And then let's go. And see, number one, we have what? Sausage rolls. Sausage roll is a what? Is a snack. Now, what is my reasons for this choice of sausage roll? It is an ideal pre-dinner snack for celebration. It is an ideal pre-dinner snack for celebration. And it is a balanced snack. Now, what are the chief ingredients for the preparation of these sausage rolls? I have sausage beef, which is 250 grams. I told you that your measurement could be in grams, could be in cups. The quantities must be there. Some of the students make the mistake of writing sausage roll. Tomatoes, pepper, no quantity. Because all this has a mark itself. So we have flour. Flour, I have 750 grams. Eggs, we have two for egg washing. Butter, we have one sachet, which is 250 grams. And then I have salt, which is one teaspoon. Baking powder, which is for leavening, one teaspoon. We are asked to prepare two snacks. 
and I've mentioned one, which is sausage roll. Now we'll go to the second one, which is garnished sardine sandwiches. Can you see the protein content here? Sardine. And then sandwiches. So we have the next snack, which is what? Garnished sardine sandwiches. What are my reasons for choice? It is light and simple to make. Very, very easy to make. It is also light. Number two, it is nourishing to serve for pre-dinner celebration. When you are asked a question in your reasons for choice, you must at least give minimum two reasons for your choice. Some students will just write one reason. You must give minimum of what? Your two reasons for your choice. And now, what are the chief ingredients and quantity for these garnished sardine sandwiches? We have sliced bread, which is two loaves. We have sardine, which is two tins. We have margarine, which is one tin. Lettuce, we have small bunch. And tomatoes, we have four balls. So now we have mentioned the first dish. The second dish, which is a snack, and then we go to the drink, which is the next one, which is the drink. We have chilled fruit punch. Some of you will be wondering, what is a fruit punch? Some students do me say fruit drink and fruit punch. Fruit punch is the mixture of three fruits together. Mixture of three fruits together. Combination of three fruits together. You can call it three alive. You can call it five alive. Once you say three alive, it means you are making use of three fruits. When you say five alive, it means five fruits are involved. So we have chilled fruit punch comprising of pineapple, apple, and watermelon. Chilled fruit punch which comprises of what? Pineapple, apple, and watermelon. What are my reasons for choice? It is a refreshing drink for them, for the teenagers. It contains lots of vitamins and minerals to regain their energy and also to what? To refresh. So what are the reasons again? It is a refreshing drink for the students or for the players. It contains lots of vitamins and minerals to gain their energy. Now what are the chief ingredients and quantity? Pineapple, we have one large. Apple, we have three balls. Watermelon, we have one large. And then sugar for syrup. One cup of sugar for syrup. They are teenagers. They need a lot of what? Carbohydrate for energy because they've just expended energy in the field. We are done with part A. Part A, as I said, has 10 marks. It has 10 marks, which that is our part A. And I told us that part A is divided into three sections, which is what? Dishes choosing, reasons for choice, chief ingredients, and quantity. Now we come to part B. Part B has no marks. Part B is also known as shopping list. Why is this shopping list? This is what the students will just glance and know what they need at a particular time for their practicals. They don't need to go back to check what do I need. This is what, some, what they need for the practical. And under this part B, we have quantity and dry stores. What do you mean by dry stores? All the foods that are packaged are dried because you can't feel them except they are opened. Some are also dried, even when they are touched. So we have quantity and dry stores, and quantity and fresh food. Oh, we talk of quantity and dry stores, and quantity and fresh foods. What do you mean by fresh foods? Food that is wet, watery, perishable foods. And now we can see that this part B, some students make the mistake of not copying out what they need here. At the end, you see some of them coming to the class with some of what? some of the items that are not needed. So now what do we have? We have eight cups of what? Rice, that is dry salt, two loaves of bread, 
one bottle of what? Salad cream, one tin of sardine, one tin of sugar, and then we come to the fresh food. We have 12 chicken wings, we have one big cabbage, we have six carrots, we have 10 tomatoes, and one bottle of granite oil. All these are fresh food, perishable. And as I told us that Part B has no marks. It serves as our shopping list. Then, the other ones we have what? Salt to taste. We have six seasoning cubes. We have two tablespoons of what? Spices, which is curry and thyme. We have 750 grams of flour, 250 grams of fat or butter. And then we have on our fresh food, we have two eggs. We have one bunch of lettuce. We have one pineapple, one watermelon, and three apples. In practical session, we go to the part C, which is time plan. And this time plan is three hours. The practical has to be three hours from 9 to 12. You start from 9 to 12, three hours for practical. And then it is divided into two, which is the time and the task. What you are expected to do at that particular time, which when the supervisor sees you not doing, it is going to be counted against you. Now we start from 9 a.m. to 9.05 by making a syrup for fruit punch and allowing to cool. In your practical class, we are asked to start with what? Foods that will be chilled in the refrigerator first before we go to the hot food. You will not finish preparing the hot food and then prepare the food that is to be chilled last. So we start with what? Foods that are to be chilled in the refrigerator. So we are making syrup for fruit punch and we are allowing to cool. Students make mistake of what? Making their sugar syrup and pouring it into the what? Into the fruits. That is wrong because fruits are water soluble vitamins and once you pour in the hot or the heated syrup, it will what? Destroy the B complex vitamins in fruits. Now 905 to 915, we wash, we peel, and blend pineapple, apple, and watermelon, and chill in the... You must write chill. You cannot say preparation of fruit juice, and you are, you are done. No. Preparation of the fruit juice and chilling. That will earn you the mark. Now, 915 to 920, you wash use plates and clean your work surface. Cleanliness also counts in food and nutrition practical and home management. Your work surface must be clean, your surrounding area must be clean, and you, the food, or the chef, or the cook, must also be clean. Then we go to 9.20 to 9.30, wash, season, and boil chicken. As you're boiling, and as your chicken, 9.30 to 9.50, wash, cut, chop vegetables for coleslaw, arrange, and chill in the freezer or in the fridge. Why? Because it is also a cold food. It needs to be served cold. 9.50 a.m. to 10 a.m. You fry the chicken and set aside. There are mistakes that students make. Once they put the sugar syrup on fire, they will fold their hands. And when you ask, what are you doing? Ma, the water is on fire. There is what we call dovetailing in food and nutrition. What is dovetailing? As your water is on fire, you are doing something else. That is doing two to three tasks at the same time. While the water is boiling, you're chopping, you're cutting, you're peeling, you're washing, you're clearing, you're cleaning. You don't have to stand still. 
to wait for the water to boil. Why? Your time will be wasted. So 9.50 to 10 a.m., you fry the chicken and set aside. Now 10 a.m. to 10, 10, wash used items. That is, you have to make sure that your surrounding area is clean. You don't have to dump the used plate and go to the next, what, food. No, it has to be washed. Your work surface has to be cleaned. So 10 to 10, 10, wash used item, clean work surface, and clear the peels. 10, 10 to 10, 30, prepare and bake your sausage rolls. You prepare and bake your sausage roll. That is 10, 10 to 10, 30. Then 10, 30 to 10, 40, you parboil and wash your rice. From 10.40 to 11.20 a.m., you fry tomatoes in preparation of the jollof rice and cooking of the jollof rice. 11.20 to 11.30 a.m., making of the sandwiches and arranging on the tray. Making of the sandwiches and arranging on the tray. Then we have 11.30 a.m. to 11.35 a.m., clean the surface area and surrounding area, clearing away use utensils. Clean the surface area, clear away. It is called clean and clearing away. It also has its own mark. Then 11.35 to 11.45, dishing out, out the various dishes in the plate. The dishes prepared, you have to dish them out either in a plate or in a flask. Then 11.45 a.m., you are done with the dishing out, you set the dinner table and present other items prepared. Setting the dinner table and present other items prepared. And that is our time plan. My students and learners at home, from this practical interpretation, we have seen that a practical test interpretation for food and nutrition has three parts. Part A, part B, part C. Under part A, we say it is also divided into three sections. Dishes choosing, reasons for choice, and chief ingredients and their quantity. And this part has 10 marks. While the part B, which is also known as the shopping list, is what we guide the student on what to bring for the practical at a glance. All the items needed for the practical. While the part C, which is what? The tasks and the activities to be done, which is three marks. That is the actual practical and what you are expected to do at any given time, which is what? Three hours from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And under this, we go into what? Dovetailing. And we are told that at the end of each, we should, every activity that's needed to be come first, should come first. As the chilling of our fruit juice, the preparation of coleslaw, they are fresh food, which needed to be served cold. They should be prepared first and then put in the refrigerator. Now, I'm going to leave you with an assignment to try what we have done today. 1A. Illustrate the use of yeast. We all know what yeast is. In our previous lesson, we defined what yeast is, raisin agent and leavening agent, and their uses in confectionaries and pastries. So illustrate the use of yeast as a raisin agent in preparing two products, two products that are yeast products. You are going to prepare two. Now B, prepare a savory dish for supper. What is a savory dish? A savory dish is a dish that is not sweet, but is highly flavored. It is not a sweet dish, but it is highly flavored. So you are going to prepare a savory dish for supper. And then C, prepare a hot beverage to serve along with the savory dish. Prepare a hot beverage to serve along with the savory dish. I remain yours, Obangozi Gloria. You can reach me on this number, 0806-594-5214, for your assignment, for any questions or observation. My name again, 
Obangazi Gloria, your home management, stroke food and nutrition teacher. You should reach me on this number for any question and your submission of your assignment. 0806-594-5214. Stay safe, keep learning, till we meet again in the actual practical class. Thank you and God bless you.